Got your Bible this morning, turn to Ephesians chapter number 1. Ephesians chapter number 1, verse number 1 says, Paul, let me get my glasses. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us into the adoption of children by Jesus Christ himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Thank you, dear Lord, once again, just to be able to bow our head in the presence. Dear Lord, this morning, be with us. Dear Lord, just put the words in our mouth, because, dear Lord, it's you and not us. Dear Lord, we can do nothing except it be by you, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we thank you, dear Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Dear Lord, we thank you for that peace. Dear Lord, just be with me this morning. Dear Lord, as we try to do your will, just, Lord, just be with this church. Dear Lord, just be with their pastor. He's often, dear Lord, on the mission field and with their young folks. Dear Lord, just be with Brother Gary. Your Lord, turn these men to God and their families back to us once again. Your Lord, just keep them safe and be with us this morning. Your Lord, let your spirit abound us much. And your Lord, we thank you and we praise you. Your Lord, we give you the honor and glory for all things. In our Father's name we pray. Amen. <coughs> I want to start out in verse number two. It says, Grace be to you and peace. If you look up the word grace, it says love or favor of God. I'm thankful that he seen fit to show his grace upon me one time when I was a little boy. He showed me his love. If you're here this morning, you have that love, you have that grace in your heart. If you do, you got peace. If you don't have salvation in your heart this morning, you don't have peace. You don't have God if you don't have peace in your heart. I'm thankful that by grace, by his love, through faith in Jesus Christ, that he saved me when I was a little boy. It wouldn't have mattered if I was a young person, an old person, or somewhere in between. I'm thankful that God came by my way when I was young, that I've known him all my life. I ain't always followed that, but I know who he is. I know what he's about. He's about saving souls. He's about giving me that peace, that understanding that only he can give. Without him, there is no peace. And I got excited when I got to reading verse number 2 in Ephesians. We see Paul wrote not only Ephesians, but he wrote Galatians, Corinthians, and several other books in the Bible. James is talking about this morning, essentially he probably wrote about half of the New Testament. And while he was writing that, in verses 1 through 3, somewhere through those other books of the Bible, you'll see he says, grace and peace. From who? From God the Father and from the Son. Well, you see, we don't have any peace unless we've got Christ in our heart. Christ came to this world, and I got to thinking of what a heavenly place he came from. He left heaven and all of its glory to come down to this earth and live like me and you, to suffer the same things that we suffer. Do you know what I feel in my heart? He never sinned, though. I sinned daily because I'm human. God put his love in my heart, and he puts his love in your heart. If he gives you peace, he will give you understanding if you've been saved. If you've never been saved, you don't know what I'm talking about. If you're here this morning and you're lost, there's only but one way you can feel that peace, and that's through Jesus Christ. Well, you see, he died on the cross, and he sits on the right-hand side of the Father. And I'm thankful that he sits there, and he's the intercessor for me. And I'm thankful that he says, when I go to Jesus, he goes to the Father and says, Son, I know your sins are forgiven. Dear Lord, here I am. Use me. Use me however you have me to be, dear Lord. And it says, well, you see, when Christ died on the cross, he went to heaven. And when he went to heaven, God sent back the comforter. And that comforter is the Holy Ghost. It's what lives down inside of you this morning. I hope your cup runneth over. Because my cup runneth over. My vessel down inside yields and screams and begs for his mercy. But you see, it's about him. It's not about us. It's not about us at all. It's about him. He gives you a life to live. Do you live it for him? You say you love Jesus this morning? about everyone in this house? I love the Lord. When's the last time you talked to a lost person? When's the last time you said, Brother, where do you go to church at? Ask God to give you that opportunity. 
Brother, do you know the Lord? Sister, through your walk of life, you get to read him. Most important, brother, you get to pray. Ask God to give you that lost soul. Ask God to give you that seed to plant. You don't have to be a preacher to plant that seed. You don't have to be a deacon. Matter of fact, a lot of you folks in here are closer to folks than we are because you're out in that world. You're walking with them. You're talking to them. When's the last time you planted a seed? When's the last time you got down on your knees and got a burden for somebody? When's the last time you got down and said, earnestly, Lord, that's just like my child over there that's lost. When your child's lost and down out, you get down on your knees and you earnestly pray for that child. You earnestly pray for that old person. When's the last time you prayed like it's my child? I think a little Dion led benefit yesterday for me. It's God's will where he lives and where he goes to be with the Father. But we try to do our part. If we do our part, he's just in doing his part. God got the blessing and I got to read the scripture and I've had it for a while. Number three says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ. Spiritual blessings. I got to thinking about, I am a walker. I can't help it. That's what God has me to do when I get to preach and I get to walk. Spiritual blessings. God gave me seven points on spiritual blessings. But there's thousands of spiritual blessings that God has given you. Thousands of them. While I'm preaching this morning, I want you to think about the blessings that God has bestowed upon you this morning. The blessings that Christ gave you. The first ones that come to my mind that God gave me was salvation. If you're here this morning, like I said, I got to say a little boy, can you go back in your mind to the place where the Lord saved you? I ain't talking about a physical structure. I want you to go back in your mind this morning and think of what a spiritual blessing God gave you the moment you accepted him in your heart. The little church that I got saved in, if it was to be gone today, I can still take the devil by the back of his neck and I can get down on my knees and I can take him right to where that spot is in my mind. If you're here this morning, I pray that you're saved. And I pray that you can take the devil back to that spot where you got saved. It may not be an old-fashioned altar. Matter of fact, I got saved in the aisle of the church. He can be in your full pew back there. But I hope it's up here. But I didn't make it up here. God got me before I got back what I said in my heart, it could be before I ever stand up. If you're here this morning, it don't matter whether you're young or old. I hope you know who he is. I hope you know what that spiritual blessing is. The next spiritual thing that God gave me. You have to excuse me. Don't devil. He'll try to choke you up, make you sciences. He'll do anything he can to keep you from talking about Jesus Christ. But this morning, and I'm going to use my wife, and I hope she don't mind because it's not about her. It's about glorifying God. My wife got saved a year ago in March. And when I got married, before I got married, she took me to church. It's one of the reasons I fell in love with her. All them years of going to church and living with her, I never heard her testify. Not one. And we'll get to that one here in a few minutes, but that ain't the one I want to get to first. We was at the house, and I believe it was fixing to read the Bible one night. And if you got, got family, I beg you to take your family and read your Bible every night that you can. Read your Bible with your spouse and with your kids. Prayer time right after it's and right before. I got to going, Lord, he sent me a thought. And I said, Wanda, my wife's name from Wanda too, maybe. I said, Wanda, I said, you remember when you got saved? I said, it ain't about feelings, but I'm glad I can feel. I said, you know what Holy Ghost bumps is? She looked at me and she grinned. She said, yeah, honey, I do. I wanted to shout. I wanted to run around that little living room. I know what she got. She said, I've had that feeling since I was a kid. I said, honey, I said, before that, I said, did you know what it was? She dropped her head. She said, no, honey. I never felt that before. When the Holy Spirit lives inside you, your cup will run us over. There will be fruit there. You cannot hide it. When God gets a hold of you, that spirit that's inside is going to want to tell somebody about Christ. You're going to want to let somebody know who he is. Because you see, I love you and you love me. And I hope today you've been praying for him because I can't preach for that. Gary can't preach for that. Brother Brian can't preach if we ain't praying for him. It's important at our prayer time that we pray for one another. We pray for our neighbors. 
We're not perfect, but we still love one another. Don't you? No matter what. Who's your neighbor? You know, it's not just Kelsey or James or some of the rest of people in my family, friends I've been with here for years. It's anybody you come in contact with. Your neighbor is the person you work with right beside us. It's the person you meet down the road. It's whoever you come in contact with is your neighbor. Be praying for them because they need them. Most of this world, a large majority of them is lost and dying without God. They're lost and dying without Christ. God sent us here, not for ourselves, but for him, to plant that seed. Spiritual blessings. Third one is, it says, the spirit when somebody sings. There's a choir up here this morning, like an angel singing. Did you feel the drawing of the spirit? And we got a pretty thing. I'm thankful you got piano players. Everywhere you go, don't have one. It's a blessing. It's a spiritual blessing when the Spirit goes to draw on me. And I get to thinking when somebody gets here, it might just be by themselves, and they get to sing. And God comes up on them. And it causes my cup to run us over. A minute ago, I mentioned testifying. Think of the other spiritual blessings that God has given you throughout your life. Think of the spiritual blessings. There's thousands of things that God has done for you that nobody else knows about. Now, you get to think about testifying. When you, God gets a hold of you, you ever been, the Lord wants you to testify and you refuse it? You ever killed a spirit? I have. It's not a feeling you want to have. I was a young man. God wanted me to share this with you. God wanted me to testify, and I refused that. God wanted me to preach, and I run from that. But I've learned to just yield. Because, see, when I didn't testify, the Lord beat my door down for a month, or maybe longer, or maybe a few weeks later. But I couldn't wait to get back to church. Then the Spirit wasn't there. God didn't say for me to testify. I had to sit there. And I've watched other people testify throughout the church when I was a young man. Then one Sunday morning, God said, Son, I said, you stand up and glorify my name. He said, that's what I want you to do is glorify me. That's what it's about is me and not you. They're not going to see you, no matter how bashful you are. He said, I said for you to stand up and glorify my name. That Sunday morning I got up. I don't know what it said. What was important is that I was glorifying him. If you're here this morning, God comes on you and he wants you to testify or sing, whatever he has you do, don't refuse it. Because when you go home, you're going to get a whooping that you ain't never had before. Try running from preaching one time. See if God don't wear you out. The closer you get, the more the devil beats on you. But when you yield, there's sweetness, there's happiness, there's peace. When you do what God had you to do, there's peace down inside. The next thing is the preacher. When the preacher gets in the spirit, he goes to blessing. It relates back down to this. I'm not talking about myself, but I got to go to a meeting a week or two ago. The young man got to preach. And he ran out the back of the church. He nearly jumped over the pulpit. And he jumped on the benches. And it's not one of these fancy things, and it wasn't for show. The Holy Ghost got a hold of him. He got to shouting while he was preaching. And it was one of them old time services. And the house was filled with the Spirit of the Lord. That is a spiritual blessing that we don't always get to see. It's a spiritual blessing when you sing, when you testify. Any time that the Lord comes up on you and shows you things, it can be at work. And you see the filthiness of this world and the things that they're talking about. God can give you a blessing by starting to pray for that person. You may be the one who gets the blessing that morning. And then I got to thinking about God gave me several points, but there's millions of them. We go to church, and as I was growing up, the Spirit come along. And I'm sure it happens here too. When a man or woman gets up and they scream real loud when the Spirit's got a hold of them. And all of a sudden you feel those Holy Ghost bumps I was talking about just come all over. There's not, nothing that I'll ever remember like that as a child when some of the women in the church would be obedient to God and just scream, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's a spiritual blessing that only God can give. I'm thankful that the church we go to. There's women, there's men that stands up and still does that. It's not of themselves, but it's of God above. It's of Christ. 
instead of holding that back, the rest of the church got a spiritual blessing. Not just that one person. Now you'll see me cry a lot. God give me a spiritual blessing. Give me a gift. A gift of tears. When I get happy, I go cry. I can't help it. And I hope he never takes it away. Because deep down inside, that's the way I can release. So God, I love you. Because see, he had more tears for me than I can ever have for him. He died on the cross for me and you. And we can have heaven eternal. Verse number four says, according as he has chosen us in him. He chose who? He chose us. He chose us in him. And it says, before the foundation of the world. He chose us before the earth or the heaven was created. Think about Christ. He chose you and you and you and me. He chose us before he ever created this earth. That's what the Bible says, not what Dwayne says. If he chose us in him, some of us refuse to accept him. But if you accept him, you'll live in heaven with him forever and ever. See, when you get to heaven, there is no time. There's really no need of the moon or the stars. Well, you see his glory shining. His glory is all you're ever going to need. And someday I'll get to live for eternity in his presence. I hope you think about that, how great that is. I'd hate to miss eternity. I'd hate to spend my life in hell and look back up and see all the people that, that love God and I refuse them. This world, they're falling off by the million day by day into a bottomless pit that never ends. Now, God ain't got me to preach to you on hell, but that is a thought I want you to think about this morning. How do you live your life? If you're a saved person, I pray everybody in here is saved, and they may very well be. But are you living your life the way God wants you to? When you go to work, you plant that seed, you water it, you see that person down the road. The Bible says blessings and curses comes out of the same mouth. I was at work, reading my Bible. This fellow comes up, and he knows his Bible well. Maybe better than I do. But he gets through talking the Bible. He goes cursing. I get killed once all over me. Lord, what do I got to do to win this man back to you? He's saved. He's just out of the will of the Lord. How many times have I got out of his will? How many times? How many times have you got out of his will? The great thing about it is I'm still saved. I'll always be saved and that'll never change. I'm still going to heaven. There's a price to pay for that sin. I got to talking to that man. And I told him, I said, uh, you know, blessings and curses come out of the same mouth. I said, God said, ever out of word come out of your mouth. Every out of word. He just looked at me. He started quitting his cussing. A few minutes, he cussed. I said, that's a warning. That's to remind you that God knows it ain't just about me. 30 minutes, an hour later, he come back. He said, a byword. I said, uh uh. I said, that's two. I said, you meant it for the other word. He dropped his head. He knows I was telling him the truth. If you're here this morning, that man got to where we talked about the Bible the rest of the day. He kept coming back. He never said another cuss word. God gave me the, the ability to talk to him in a Christian and a friendly way because he is my friend. When you're out in this world, you may see me sin. What I want you to do is pray for me. What I want you to do is say, Lord, help him see where he's wrong. Because, see, I'm human. The preacher ain't no different than the rest of you. I sin on a daily basis. There ain't one perfect. When I started, that's Jesus Christ. I love him with all my heart, with all my mind, all my soul, with every being that I have. I love Jesus Christ. I love God. That doesn't mean I'm perfect. But it does mean I'm going to heaven. From the foundation of that we should be holy and without blame, before him and love. Right, preacher? How do you stand before God holy and blameless? You've been saved by the blood. You've been washed as white as snow. You've been saved by the blood of your spotless. When you stand before God, you'll be pure. Why? Because of his blood and not because of your doings. It'll be because you serve a holy God, because you love Jesus Christ and you accept him in your heart will make you pure. 
Number five says, having predestinated us into an adoption of children by Jesus Christ himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. It was from the very beginning that we'd be a child of God. He ain't going to make us or drag us to an altar. He ain't going to make us worship him. No. He's got angels in heaven that serve him. The cherubims that go glory, glory, glory throughout eternity. If that's what he wanted, he could have created more of us. He created man so that he hoped that we would serve him and not sin against him. That when we did, we would turn to him. This world that we live in, be praying real hard because the time is near. You can look at the signs of the times. It ain't long before God comes back. We've heard that all of our life. But if you read your Bible, it will tell you he cometh and he cometh quickly. Are you ready to go when he comes? The main thing is, are you ready? How many people are you going to take with you? I won't be serious this morning. I can't live without him. And you can't either. Now, you got your Bible. I'm going to turn to John chapter 1. You can turn if you want to. John chapter number 1, verse number 1 says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word is Christ. The Word is God. And the Word was with God. Christ was with him from the very beginning. And the Word was God. This Bible is our Lord and Savior. Because with, without his Word, you got the Spirit. The Spirit reveals whether we're his or his not. You can talk to somebody for a little while. And you can pretty much tell where they love God or where they don't. He says, in the very beginning. Verse number 2 says, the same was in the beginning with God. Christ was there from the very start. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. If you're here this morning... God made you for his pleasure. As I told you earlier, he didn't make you for yourself. You're to serve him on a continually basis. Preacher, how do you do that? How do I serve God all the time with all my heart, with all my strength, with all my mind, with all my being? You start out with prayer. I didn't plan to preach this, but it's what God's got on my mind right now. When's the last time? I hope it's daily. I hope you get down on your knees at night. I hope you pray, pray three or four times a day. I hope you pray over every back you take. Well, you see, when you pray, you get down on your knees, it's just you and the Lord. And you're asking for what you need. Are you asking for that person that's lost? Are you asking for the things that, that's of God? Second thing is read. Read your Bible. You want to get close to God? You want to do what he'd have you to do? You want to get away from these worldly things? I'm glad that you're in God's house this morning because there's a time that I wasn't in God's house. I'm not happy about that. I'm sad because when I stand for just God, I'm going to say, God, I wasn't in church. Why weren't you there, son? What am I going to do? I got nothing to say. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. But by his blood, I was covered. By his blood, he don't see my sin. No, but I still have to answer for that. When you go off, do you take God with you? When you go on vacation, or do you leave him at the house? If you pack your bags, your treasures are in heaven. When you go somewhere, take God with you. Go somewhere, take your Bible with you. When you go to work, get you a little testament. Even if you don't read it. You'd be surprised how many people that will ask you about Christ. Just because you've got a little Bible in your hand. God said to tell you this morning, plant that seed. I don't know why I'm going this way, but that's what God wants. Get your Bible. You don't have to. I want you to read it. But get a good old-fashioned King James Little Testament. When somebody asks you a question, be able to answer. Be able to plant that seed because that might be a Christian person. The reason I started reading my Bible at work, two other people. One was in the cafeteria for years reading his Bible. I got to talking to him. He was reading an old-fashioned King James Bible. 
He's a friend of mine to this day. Not too long ago, in the apartment I worked in, there was a young lady. She was reading her Bible. And I got ashamed. I should have been doing that all along. I had no reason not to. She sits there and reads her Bible in front of everybody. She's not ashamed of it. I'm not ashamed of him either. God wants you to spread the gospel. You don't have to be a preacher or a pastor. You just have to be a willing and obedient servant. Thank you, Lord. He is that light. One of these days, I'm going to get to live in that light. We're going to turn back to Ephesians. I'm glad that I've been adopted in. For you see, children of God is Israelites. And anybody else was considered nothing but a Gentile dog. We had no hope. We had no salvation. We had no way. It was his chosen people. Then, Christ buried it all for us. And I was adopted into the family of God. And being in that family of God, I get to be with my brothers and sisters that love me. And I hope you get to thinking about heaven and what's there. If you read your Bible, you read the books of the Bible, I'll tell you some of the things are there, the stones, but the most are the walls, the streets, all those things are great. But I don't desire to see them. I do want to see them. But I want to see my Savior first. So he paid the price. One of these days I'll be able to kneel at his feet. Never be worthy to preach, teach, or do anything. But I thank God called me. I'm thankful for what I feel in my heart this morning. I'm thankful for a Savior that let his grace shine upon me. That he gave me that love many years ago. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Here this morning, if you've been redeemed, you've been forgiven. But there's a price paid for that. Christ paid that price. He died on the cross. He took his blood and he put it on the mercy seat. And he did it for all mankind. And I got to thinking about the riches of his grace. I got to thinking about my salvation. Yeah, I can tell you about being saved. I can tell you some of what it feels like. But unless you've experienced salvation, it's indescribable. It's the greatest thing that ever happened to me. I can sit here and I can preach to you and I can teach to you and I can tell you what the love of God is. But the riches of his love is his spirit that lives down inside of me. This morning, does he live down inside of you? Do you follow after him? If you do, his riches is indescribable. I can't describe it because one of these days I'll experience it when I'm in the presence of God through the light that we were talking about. We're going to skip over to verse number 10. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together and warn all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. One of these days he's coming back. One of these days he's going to gather the four corners of heaven, he's going to gather the corners of the earth, and he's going to pronounce judgment. And I'm glad that I'll be in heaven when he, he calls my number, whether it be in the rapture, or whether it be if I go before he, before he comes. I know that I'll live forever with him. I have that blessed assurance in whom we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things through the counsel of his own will. And I got to thinking about that inheritance. You know, most of us here have an inheritance in this old world. We have parents that we've inherited their land or what they have. But the greatest inheritance I'll ever have is the kingdom of heaven. Well, you see, when I got saved, I become a child. I become a child of God. I become a child of Christ. I belong to him. And I'm thankful that he lives inside of me. That inheritance, nobody can take away. If uh, no matter what happens to me, the devil cannot take my salvation. He can't come and say, Dwayne, you're a sinner. Yeah, I am, devil. 
So I can take you back to that place I was telling you about earlier. And he will flee when I get to praying, when I get to reading. You see, the devil knows this word better than you do. That's the reason he knows your weaknesses. But God knows your weaknesses too. And all you got to do is pray and read. And ask God to take that away from you, no matter what it is. And he'll bless you. Today's message, God and the title of Spirit of Promise. That's down to verse number 13. It's just, In whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of the truth. How do you hear the word of God's word? If you read your Bible, you know what God's got for you. You hear the word through teaching. If your teacher through you. You hear the word through preaching. Brother Gary and these other preachers that come through. I thank God that he gives us the ability, not of ourselves, but through him. To come and speak to anybody. I don't feel worthy to say one, one word. Because you see, I'm worse than filthy rags. But we have one above that said, forever we're his. We have an inheritance. And if you trust in him, it comes on out there, the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, whom also after that you believed, after you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. This morning, how many of you ladies in here can? How many men in here can? When you can something, you seal it. When you seal it, you preserve it. When you preserve it, it's preserved for a long, long time. When you're preserved, you're sanctified. You've been made holy. I thank God that when he sealed my salvation, he preserved it forever. There's nothing that can take it away. There's nothing that can change it. I'm not going out here and lose my salvation because I messed up. I'm a sinner. But when I sin, Lord, will you forgive me? Because I don't want to feel your wrath. I know what that's like. You're not going to sin and get by with it. Somewhere down the way, God knows what you did. He knows whether you're living a righteous life or an evil life. But I'm thankful the day I got saved, it's been sealed and it's been preserved forever. And the devil and all his demons can never take that spot and that floor in my mind away. As I said when we started out here this morning, I hope when I was talking about the spiritual blessings, I hope you've been thinking about those spiritual blessings this morning. We're going to skip down to verse number 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance and the saints and what is in the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the word of his mighty power. God gave me some thoughts on this when I got to reading and got to study. Me and my wife, if the devil don't keep me out of it, I try my best to pray before we read. Well, if I pray before I read, brother, number one, I said, Lord, give me the knowledge, give me the wisdom, but most of all, Lord, will you give me the understanding of your word? And if I live to be 100 years old, I'll never understand everything in that Bible. No matter how much he gives me of the knowledge. Lord, it's not just for me, but it's for the people that I talk to, that I preach to, that I get to teach to. Lord, will you help me understand your word? Will you help my wife to understand the word? Because when she's out in this world, She's with my little granddaughter. You never know what you're going to say to a child. There's no age limit on salvation. Kids get saved from very young to old. We're standing back there this morning talking about an inheritance. To be an inheritance, you've got to be a child. My dad's sitting back here. I'm 52 years old. But I'm still that little boy running around his feet 
52 years ago, 51. In God's eyes, no matter how old I get, I'm still that child in God's eyes. I'm not here on this earth, I'm running around. My wisdom is so small compared to God's mind. The Bible talks about how, how exceeding power God is. Here this morning, just a blink of an eye, it'll be over. It's that quick. Are you ready? Have you been planting seed? We're going to skip over to chapter number two. We're just about ready to finish. I want to close with a couple thoughts on my mind. The Bible says, verse number five, chapter number two, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace are you saved. His grace is his love and the favor of God. By his grace, by faith, are you saved. If you don't have faith, if you don't believe in him, you don't have his love. Number, we're going to skip down to number seven. It says that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I've got a friend I mentioned in Sunday school. He believes that he can be good enough to get into heaven. No matter how good you are, no matter how many things you do in life, you can give everything that you own. You can study God's word till the day you die. You can tell me you love him. But if you don't have that blood applied to your heart, and I thought my wife had been saved for all them years. And when you get saved, there'll be fruit. You can't hide him. He's going to come out. Don't mean we're perfect, because we're not. But it says it's not by works but by faith. God made it simple for you to be saved. And this world that we live in, I feel like most of us in here, or all of us are saved, and you understand what I'm talking about. This world wants to make it something hard. When you go out into this world and you're witnessing to your co-workers, remember, all you have to do is believe and in your own mind, ask them. When I was a child, and I got down in that little pew before I made it up there because the altar was full, I asked him from my heart. I didn't ask him because I thought Daddy wanted me to. I didn't do it because of somebody else. God was dealing with my heart. And I said, Lord, I don't remember exactly what I asked him. I said, I do know that I asked him to save me. Forgive him. And he was righteous in doing so. If you will, I want every head bowed for just a minute or two. God's done with the message this morning. If you're here this morning, are you saved? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody looking around. If you're here this morning, and you know the Lord Jesus Christ is your personal Savior. Are you living for Him? Are you planting those seeds? Are you doing the things that God would have you to do? If not, there's an altar up here this morning. And if you're here this morning and you're lost, there's an altar up here. There's a pew that you're sitting in back there. God, if He's been dealing with you, we're going to pray in just a minute, and then we're going to change the service. If you're here this morning, and you have a need, it don't have to be about salvation. Every head bowed, every, head, every eye closed. If you're here this morning, if you want this old preacher to pray for you, will you raise your hand? Anybody else? Thank you for those hands. I won't come to you. I won't talk to you. I just want to pray for you. Anybody else? Anybody? God knows your needs. Anybody else? Thank you for that hand. Thank you for that hand. Anybody else? Thank you for those hands. Anybody else? Anybody? Hands going up all over the house. Anybody else? God can answer those prayers. 
and he will if you ask him. But you have to be faithful. And you have to believe when you ask. We're going to pray. Pray with us. Thank you, dear Lord, once again, just to be able to come into your house, dear Lord. We just thank you for those hands. Dear Lord, just be with each need. Dear Lord, best be with the ones that are sick. Dear Lord, be with many objects of prayer, dear Lord. Be with the ones that are out of town. Dear Lord, just be with the ones that, most importantly in this life, that are lost, dear Lord, that we know that they don't proclaim to be saved. Dear Lord, just touch them. Dear Lord, just be with us. Dear Lord, we thank you this morning so much for your salvation. Dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come into your house once again. Dear Lord, we love you. Dear Lord, we just want to put our arms around you, dear Lord, for just a few minutes. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all things. We're going to change the service just a little bit this morning. Now, we've got a lot of folks that are off traveling, a lot of folks that are sick, and you've got a lot of folks on this prayer list. anybody got an unspoken request or a spoken request for prayer? Anybody else? Anybody over here? Anybody got a spoken request? Anybody got a spoken request? I've got several of my own. I've got family that's lost. I've got friends that are lost. Uh, that's the most important prayer we can ever pray is for, for that. Uh, there's several names on this list we're going to read. I want you to remember Brother Gary. Uh, he's on vacation. While he's out traveling, it's a dangerous world. He'll be on my mind this week. Remember Brother Brian, he's my pastor. They're up in Maine. That's Brother Gary's son. Remember him and the people that goes to church with us. There's 20 or 30 of them up on a mission trip. It's a very dangerous world. They just went through New York. Keep them in your prayers this week as, you, as well as you do Gary. Keep me in your prayers. I can't stand before God. I can't preach or do anything else unless he's there. Now I'm going to read these names off once again. It's on your bulletin here. Florence Am Ammons, Edith Brown, George Brown, Hazel Roberts, Eula Capps, Clifford and Lois Engel, Dion Douglas, uh, Job's Hispanic Missionary, Autumn Roberts, Leticia Correll, Mary and Eva Robinson, Thelma Rice, Victor and Shirley Hensley, Joe and Christine Ogle, Jean Coates, Liz Clayton, Victor and Shirley Hensley, uh, Charity Ray, Buzz Crowder, Haley, Christopher's foster daughter, the Lost, Joanne Jenkins, Ricky Luther, this church. That should be all words of prayer, that God would keep a hedge around this church. And not only this church, but the churches in this area that are serving God. Helen DeBrule, Donna Rice, Elaine Burleson, uh, Patsy Norton, Amber, Pastor's daughter, Wanda Robinson, and Special Objects. I also want you to remember all the hands that went up those objects that were not spoken, God knows objects of every heart. If you're here this morning and you're able to, I want you to come around this altar. And you raise your hands. I want to pray with you. Everybody that's able, I want you to come around the altar this morning. Every, everybody that's able to be able to get down on their knees.